Hello everyone, we're going to be taking a quick look at Verpal's CM2 throttle today. Overall, the build quality is very nice. I like how it feels. Um, the plastic is built um, very nicely. It feels nice in the hand. Um, it's very solid feeling. Um, I actually didn't know it was plastic. I thought that this was rubberized when I first looked at some of the pictures, but it's just a very nice waffle cut. Um, feels good, feels solid. Motion of the throttle is extremely smooth, and when we hook it up to the software like we'll do a little bit later, uh, we'll take a closer look at how precise it is, um, which really helps with air-to-air uh, -air refueling um, and a lot of other maneuvers that require precision of the throttle. The design of it is pretty well laid out. Um, it is built for larger hands than mine. I am, I think, pretty average size in the hands. My glove size is uh, medical size seven. And my hand is just not quite large enough to reach all of the buttons very easily. We'll take a closer look at this um, from the sort of the back view. Um, but as you can see just up here that I can reach these, uh, I can reach this two-way switch, this analog. Um, I don't even know what this thing is, slider. This hat and this analog stick, but I can't reach all of those while also reaching this pinky button over here. The amount of buttons on the base is quite substantial, especially when you take into account the fact that the mode dial will double, uh, triple, quadruple, or quintuple any of the functions here. Now this can be configured in software, which allows you to increase the amount of virtual buttons. So by default, I believe there's around 90, but I've set the software up such that whenever I have this set in a different mode, these switches, map to different inputs. So when I have it in mode one, these will match to certain inputs. When I switch it over to two, they'll map to something else. Same thing with the dials and the push buttons on the dials. Overall, I like it quite a bit. I came from the Thrustmaster TWCS, which is uh, their sort of lower end throttle, but really one of the throttles that's been highly recommended on forums um, as being quite flexible, but also not very expensive. So we're gonna take a look at how the TWCS compares to this in just a minute. All right, and here I have the Thrustmaster throttle um, side by side so we can compare. And we're just gonna start by comparing the physical layout, um, ease of use of accessing the buttons and the type of inputs that are available. We'll look at accuracy um, a little bit later when we dive into the software. Um, but right off the bat, you can see that the Thrustmaster throttle is designed for smaller hands or certainly just isn't as wide, which makes, thing, which makes accessing all the buttons a little bit easier. There are fewer buttons, however, so that is the trade-off. You can see at the front here, let me just come around to the side. At the front of the throttle, there are two buttons for your pinky and ring finger. There is a two-way switch, very much like the two-way switch here. And then there is an analog mini joystick. My analog mini joystick has um, died on this throttle, which is one of the reasons that I was um, deciding on getting a different throttle. And then on the side, we've got three hat switches and a single button. And then lower down, we and in front, we have this paddle analog switch, which is very useful for uh, rudders if you're doing DCS or thrusters if you're doing um, Elite Dangerous or Star Citizen. So the buttons here, or the hats here, have very distinct presses, not a lot of motion. Feels fine, really nothing huge to complain about. You can rotate around if you wanted to. The, each button click is separate, so it feels very distinct when you're pressing up. I'm activating a button that's upwards. When I press left, I'm activating a button that's towards the left. 
they don't feel substantial. They've got a lot of play. You know, they, they function. They don't feel great. But what I will say is that the button presses are confident and that you know exactly what button you're pushing when you press it. The hats on the Verpal Throttle are quite a bit different. The hats have a click when you press them in any direction, but it doesn't matter which direction you press them in, up, left, right, or even up into the left or at any of the 360 degrees. When you push it in any direction, you'll feel a click. The click feels like it's coming from the middle of the hat. It doesn't really localize to any direction. And after it's been clicked, you can rotate the hat and there's no further tactile or audible feedback. In essence, it kind of acts like a point of view hat or an analog stick that just sort of clicks out when you leave the center and then the direction that you're going in and where you land affects the button input. It's very different from this design where each direction has its own button. And you can't, you, you could slide around, but you're gonna hear and feel the buttons as you activate them. So here we're gonna take a look at the hat response. So I've got pulled up the um, joystick tester that VPC or Verbal provides. And if I'm very precise with my hat inputs, it's not a problem. I have my thumbs um, over the textured portion of the hat, and I'm pushing directly in the direction and, uh, opposite of where my thumb is resting, and it's, there's no problem. But if I'm coming down here and I'm trying to push forward, you can see there I just activated two inputs, and my hand is resting naturally, and I'm just pressing forward, and it's activating two inputs. If I try to go fast, um, sometimes, okay, this is actually working pretty well. Um, sometimes when I go fast, I'll find that I accidentally activate two inputs. There's one. It doesn't happen all that often. We're going to try another one over here, one of the other hats. That was a good example. Especially here because there's not really much for your thumb to grab onto, so coming backwards is a little more challenging upwards. Um, Certainly, I think if you take it slow and you're very thoughtful about what you're pressing, it's less likely to be an issue. But it's... Man, that was pretty hard. It's very easy to accidentally activate a hat input that you don't intend to. And that's been one of my most frustrating experiences with this throttle, has been the hats. Just to offer another point of comparison, this is the VKB Cosmosema, or the Space Combat Grip. And I just wanted to demonstrate how the hats are a little bit different on this as well. These hats are similar in style to the uh, Thrustmaster hats that we looked at earlier, in the sense that each direction is really a unique button. And you can feel the button press in the direction that you're moving towards. Now these buttons feel much nicer than the Thrustmaster buttons, but it's similar in that style. And when I press it in, you can't really rotate it around. Kind of, but there's a lot of resistance. And if you reach another hat activation, you feel the button pressing. They feel very nice. And they move quite confidently. You know which hat direction you're pressing, and I have not once had an issue pressing a hat direction I didn't mean to press. Okay, so we're going to conclude by taking a look at the performance of the throttle axes and the accuracy of the throttle axes. Um, we're going to start by looking at the Thrustmaster throttle, which I have pulled up here in the Verbal Joystick Tester. And you can see along here on the Z-axis this is the actual raw number that's being fed um, into whatever software you're using um, as the throttle value. And I have my the palm of my hand rested down here to give me an anchor, and I'm really just using my fingertips and um, sort of the top part of my palm and trying to use very, very small movements. and it's very hard to get more than a couple hundred of these points 
to get, have accuracy more than a couple hundred points at once. Um, when doing air-to-air -air refueling, it's very important that you have your throttle precisely located so that you can match, or doing formation flying, your throttle very precisely located um, so that you can keep up speed. And it's just hard to really have a lot of accuracy. I did grease my throttle. I didn't use the, you know, not, I don't know how to pronounce the name of the special type of gel that they recommend, but I used just sort of a routine marine grease. Um, and it made the action a lot smoother, but it's still very hard to get quite precise movements out of it. This is in comparison with the verbal throttle here. So the axes here are the RX and RY, which are currently mirrored because I have the I have the throttle halves combined, but you can separate them. And I'm not even resting my hand down to anchor at all. I just have it resting on top of the throttle, and you can see I'm going to try to pull back on the throttle. And I can make extremely fine movements here. You can see those numbers are very, very slowly coming down. And this is easy to do, I'm just barely thinking about pulling the throttle back and it's coming back slowly. And here I'm going to come back up. It's just incredibly easy and smooth. No jerking. There's just a lot of precision control you have in this. The other bonus too for when you're trying to really nail in your uh, airspeed is you can separate the throttles and you can use them separately. So if you, for example, you have a pretty good idea of what your base flying speed should be, your airspeed should be, and you need to come forward a little bit because you're losing some ground, you can keep your right hand throttle steady, give yourself some extra speed here, and then pull it back on the left to match where your right throttle was. Or you can bring the left throttle up, then the right throttle up, then left up, right up, just sort of walk it up, and that gives you even more precision. All right, so overall thoughts, as I said in the beginning, I really like this throttle. It's um, Built extremely well, I love how it feels. It's got a tremendous amount of buttons, more than really I expect I'll ever need. Um, feels nice, it's extremely sensitive, very smooth. Um, I was able to do air-to-air -air refueling in about 15 minutes of trying after being unsuccessful after trying for several hours on the, my previous throttle. Uh, maybe it was just the practice that I had invested that finally paid off, but it was just much, much easier to do when you have um, fine control of your throttle inputs. Um, my only real gripe is the hat design, as I've talked about before. Um, maybe this is a personal preference, but I hope that Verbal considers um, using an alternative hat design moving forward. Overall, though, I have um, no problem wholeheartedly recommending the throttle and think it's um, absolutely worth the three to $350 it cost compared to the uh, roughly, what, $50 to $80 on the previous throttle. Um, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any other questions. I'm happy to put up extra videos if people want me to take a closer look at any of the areas in particular. Um, if you like the video, um, please click like, let me know, and um, I might be able to do some other reviews in the future um, if you guys liked what you saw. Thanks so much.